As our various JSON API implementations expect to be able to save and retrieve data beyond the lifetime of a single request, it makes sense that sooner or later we're going to need a database. Now, depending on your preference, you may wish to use MySQL or Postgres for your database. Sometimes one is easier than the other, sometimes it makes no difference. We're going to make use of Docker for our database. You don't need to, it just makes life easier in my opinion. There's no prerequisite knowledge required for using Docker. Everything that we do will be done largely with just two commands. And if you'd like to know more about Docker, I have a very beginner friendly tutorial on the site. Please see the show notes where I have a link to that course. Now, whichever database you want to use, a docker-compose.yaml file is going to make working with Docker the easiest it can be. Now, whether you're using MySQL or Postgres, we're going to start off by creating a docker-compose.yaml file in the root of our projects directory. Now, I don't yet have an implementation, so I'm going to create my Docker Compose YAML file in the root of this directory just for the purposes of demonstration. And then as we go through each of the implementations, I will redo this process per implementation and just add that specific database. Now, don't worry too much at this stage if that doesn't make a great deal of sense. It will do as we go through this. So I'm going to do a Docker Compose.yaml file, and it's YML, not YAML at this stage. And I'm just going to paste in the contents that I've got in my clipboard. You can find this exact example in the show notes. At the time of recording, MySQL 5721 is the very latest image. But if you are unsure or you'd like to see if there was a newer one, just do a search for Docker Hub MySQL. Check out the library MySQL link on Docker Hub and look for the latest version and then update your tag accordingly. Now you can use latest tag, but I wouldn't actually advise that as it can be a little misleading on what exact version that you've got on your system. Even though it's tagged as latest on your system, it may not be the latest that's available on Docker Hub. And you could use version eight of MySQL. There's nothing specific in this course that would use any of those features. So all this configuration is going to do is bring up a MySQL instance running version 5.7.21. The database is going to be available on port 3306. This is the standard port for MySQL. If you have an existing MySQL instance running on your machine, then you can change this, change the first number here, maybe to 3307. And what that's going to do is map the public port of 3307 to the internal port of 3306. And by doing this, you'll be able to connect from, e.g. your Symfony application, to your MySQL database on port 3307, rather than the standard of 3306. Everything else will behave as normal. And say you had another Symfony site, or another Laravel site, or another Django site, or something like that, you could increment that port so each one would be connecting on like 3308, 3309, 3310 and so on and you never get a port conflict. There's four mandatory environment variables when bringing up a MySQL Docker container, the root password, the database name itself, the user and the password. Generally in development I just keep all of these the same with the exception of the database. Typically I just call this db underscore dev. If I've got different environments, then I might have a db underscore acceptance, db underscore staging, stuff like that. And also I would then update the service name as well. Now Docker volumes are an interesting concept. I have a link in the show notes that goes into much more depth on this. I've left the volume section commented out. And what this means is our data will only hang around for the lifetime of the container. In other words, once we stop and remove our container, any data that was stored in the database at that time will just be erased. Which is fine for the purposes of a tutorial, but of course in the real world, you probably want your data to hang around. So if you do, then uncomment these two lines. And what that's going to do is when you bring up your container, it's going to create a new directory inside our local directory called volumes with the name MySQL dev and anything related to this particular container is going to be stored in there and it's going to be mapped into that container as via MySQL. In other words, all the important stuff for your MySQL instance is going to be saved onto your hard disk. Now again, if following the Docker tutorials and the links are in the show notes, this would be a bind mount. These are potentially simpler to work with depending on your operating system that is. So be sure to watch the video on bind mount versus volumes for a little bit more depth on that subject. For my purposes, I'm simply gonna leave it commented out. I'm also going to add in the Postgres service here. This is purely for demonstration. It's not typical to have a MySQL and Postgres database up in the same project, but you could do. The configuration is all in the show notes again. I'm just gonna change the database name here again to dbdev. These two won't conflict. They're completely different services. It just means when we bring these services online, our database is already online and available for us to connect using the credentials that we specified. So those are our two service definitions. Now I'm going to go across to the command line. I'm going to do a docker compose up minus D 
to run these in the background. Now, if you don't yet have the Docker images available locally, first it's gonna pull them down as you can see it's doing here. This can take a while depending on the speed of your internet connection. I'm making this look a lot faster than it is in real life thanks to the magic of post-production video editing. Okay, so once it's pulled down those images, it brings up containers based on the spec that we've just provided. So we can do a Docker PS minus A. And whilst the output looks a bit messy, it's because I've got a very small amount of screen real estate going on. On your own computer, this should all be nice and on one line. And if we drop this down a little bit, and do a Docker PS minus A, you'll see what I mean. Just be a little bit hard for you to see if I did the videos like that. So before we go any further, I want to show you how to stop those containers. So it's just a Docker Compose down. And again, Docker PS minus A to see that now there's nothing running. Now, typically I don't work like that. I don't like remembering all the Docker commands. So rather than remember these commands, I'm just gonna to touch a new file called make file. You don't need to do this. You can do it from your IDE. It's just my IDE particularly doesn't like tabs. So if I do a vim on make file, I'm gonna go into insert mode, Command and V to paste in the contents of my clipboard. And as you can see there, it's trying to convert my tabs to spaces. I don't want that. I want it to keep my tabs as they are. Let's delete that top line there. Okay, so escape, then W and Q to write and quit. And we'll just cat that make file again. So you can see the contents there. So we only need to remember two commands. We can type in make dev and make down. So when we run make dev, first it's going to try and shut everything down if there's anything running. Then it's going to try and build our Docker file. Well, we don't have a Docker file, so there's nothing to worry about there. This is just the same command I use on pretty much every project. So sometimes it is that we want to build our local Docker file. In this case, there isn't one, so don't worry about that. Then we're going to run the real meat of the command, the Docker Compose with the F. So the file that it's going to point at is our local Docker Compose.yaml file. Now you can have multiple different Docker Compose files. So sometimes you might have like one that overrides it. Maybe you'd have a docker compose.dev.yaml or a docker compose.staging.yaml, which just provides more specific overrides to a given environment. Again, it's slightly more advanced. You don't need to worry about it. You don't really need to know much about any of these commands, honestly. But again, if you'd like to, there is a tutorial already on this on the site. And using the services defined in that docker compose yaml file it brings up our stack in detached mode and removes any orphans which is a bit of a hardcore command honestly it sounds really brutal but essentially it just deletes anything that's left over should we have changed our docker compose yaml file so maybe we've removed a service or whatever in between bringing our stack up and down again it's advanced you don't need to worry about it it's just the same command i use in every project and rather than try and sort of dumb things down I like to show you the real world stuff. And then we've also got the make down command, which is just simply going to run Docker Compose down. This is how I like to do it anyway. So essentially what that allows us to do is simply run make dev. And with just one command, we brought up our stack. For me, it's a lot easier to remember just to run like make dev and it does everything for me rather than have to type in Docker Compose up minus D blah, blah, blah. And remember all the flags. And if there's any leftover services or anything like that, then I'd have to run these commands manually and whatnot. And just to be absolutely clear, and and just means that we're running multiple commands in the same line. So docker compose down is one command, docker compose build is another command, and and docker compose, and then this is all one command. And the slashes just allow me to put the command over multiple lines. And once we've got our services up, we can just do a make down to bring everything down. Now I appreciate there's quite a few new concepts in here if you've never used Docker or make files before. You don't need to use Docker, you don't need to use make files. For me personally, I think this simplifies things. I don't really want to focus on creating new databases every time I do a little bit of a tutorial here and there. So Docker just makes my life easier. Make files make my life easier because I don't need to remember a bunch of commands. Your opinion may differ and that's absolutely fine. But the good news is that's our crash course in Docker done.